Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zara of Chess channel and welcome to another beautiful game from the Hans Niemann against the world competition that we have followed now in the last couple of weeks. We have here Hans Niemann against Etienne Bacro in an amazing Taiman of Sicilian in which Hans Niemann will show us here really new beautiful ideas of this opening from White's perspective, a really cool middle game plans, novelties, attacking ideas, attacking chances, brilliant tactics all over the world. So Hans Niemann is really in top shape and he already in this event outplayed top GMs like Anish Giri. He won also his match against Nikita Vityugov and also in this match, in this whole match, Hans Niemann was much much better than uh, Etienne Bacro and Etienne Bacro is a very really strong player. In the classical time format section where they played six games, Hans Niemann gained four and a half points which is a huge huge result. In the blitz section, Hans was unstoppable. He gained nine points against Etienne Bacro's three points out of the 12 games they played and in the rapid section they played a draw three points for both sides but really 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 spectacular performance by Hans Niemann and he's actually becoming stronger and stronger and he gained many reigning points especially in this classical time form of chess games in which uh, Hans gained as I said many many points and he's now the 16th uh, best player in the world when it comes to this format of chess which is really really incredible if Hans continues to play like this I can imagine a scenario where Hans will be a part of the top 10 club for sure in the next couple of months because he's playing really awesome brilliant brilliant sharp attacking chess and I've sorted out now this game in the Taiman of Sicilian uh, it was a classical time format game in which Hans Niemann really as i said played awesome brilliant spectacular ideas of this opening from white's perspective so let's see now what happened with the white pieces hans opened with the move e4 etienne bacros uh, the response was c5 the sicilian knight of three e6 the french variation d4 c takes d knight takes d and now after knight to c6 uh here etienne bacro keeps more pressure against this knight on d4 knight to c3 queen to c7 the time of variation uh of the sicilian defense we have now bishop to e3 which becomes now the so-called English attack. The idea about this attack is in some lines, maybe not uh, immediately, but in the later stage of the game to play something like f3, g4, h4. Then you're trying, of course, to put more pressure against the black's king if, for instance, black castles uh, here on the king side. Um, like in any Sicilian here, um, white uh, get challenged in this way, a6 by Etienne Bacro, preventing first of all the move b5, but in some lines of course preparing b5 here and then if you castle maybe from white's perspective too early on the queen side then you could uh, be attacked with b5, b4 and similar stuff. So we have queen to f3, b5 here by Etienne Bacro, immediately uh, putting more pressure on the queen side, knight takes c6 and now queen to c6 competing now also against the queen on f3. We have bishop to d3 Hans keeps now everything compact here around the square e4 because his pawn on uh, e4 is now the main space advantage that he uh, uh, that he got what he's trying to do is in some lines maybe get even the pawn somehow on e5 to occupy the fifth rank and here Etienne Bacro plays I think a very interesting idea he plays now the move h5 and this move um, it's very dangerous because um, if you castle now for instance from white's perspective too early again on the king side then black will simply continue with h4 h3 if you continue uh, sorry if you continue here to um, maybe with queen side casting then again you get get attacked on this side of the board so basically with this whole concept uh, with the move h5 uh, Etienne Bacro is waning what Hans going to do and then he will probably attack that side where white is going to castle so very very interesting also sideline here by Etienne Macro. We have now the move A4. Hans is searching for a clarification on, on the queen side. We have b4, knight to b1, knight to f6, and now knight to d2. Again, keeping everything compact here around the square e4. And now comes Etienne Macron's beautiful idea with the move knight to g4. You see how important it was in the first place also to play the move h5. Now, it seemed to be in the beginning to me that he somehow tricked here. Maybe uh, Hans Niemann with this move knight to g4 because he is attacking the bishop. The bishop doesn't have so many good squares because uh, the knight is covering maybe a retreating score on d2 here but Hans plays now a beautiful beautiful idea he plays knight to c4 he says okay I'll give up my bishop pair I don't care so much about the bishop pair you can take it and Etienne Bacro accepts the challenge plays now knight to e3 but now this next move was very shocking for me Hans played now the beautiful f takes e3 instead of knight takes 
E3. Now he takes E3 seems like a logical idea here to me. Why not? You're controlling the D5 square. You're controlling the F5 square. Nothing can happen. You have a really, really powerful knight. But here after F takes E3, Hans is, an Hans is announcing here the possibility of an attack on the F file, which is really, really a beautiful idea. What should you do? The problem for black is here. If you try something like D5, this is not working because there are some tactics like this. Queen to F7, King to F7, and then Knight to E5. You have to be careful. This is also a nice tactic that Hans Niemann has prepared. So after F takes E3, what you should do, and unfortunately for Etienne Bakro, he didn't do, uh, you should play here F6. F6 locks out now immediately at the F file, and you're not allowing any progressive attacks on this side of the board. So it was simply... Um, the best choice but i'm not sure how many of us would even consider mo moves like f6 uh, to weaken further your life squares as i said very very strange uh, move that for instance the stopfish engine is suggesting here then after something like queen to g3 and then you have to play rook to h6 maybe with king to f7 rook to g6 and similar stuff queen side casting you can maybe play h4 so i don't really want to dive into too much now stockfish analysis but uh, very really strange that you have to play the move f6 but now after move d6 that etienne bakro played hans is saying okay show me what you got show me how you're going to defend now this pawn on f7 and Tien Bakro reacted with rook to a7 connecting now the rook to the pawn but now Hans plays a beautiful follow-up a5 uh, this is the way to go with the preparation to fix the knight on a beautiful square on this beautiful b6 square and there's nothing that can be done again d5 if you try um, it's not working because of knight to b6 uh, then you're trying something like this we play rook to c1 uh then c3 is going to happen the c file is going to be open you cannot castle here this pawn is weak uh, even if you try this one we'll simply take with the bishop um th the control of the light squares is something that bothers i think here uh black for sure c3 is now i think the most powerful plan for instance in this position uh for white so that's why for a5 we have rook to c7 uh, knight to b6 obviously here by hans niemann bishop to b7 and now hans plays this beautiful idea c3 that's the the powerful plan he's trying now to open the c file the rook is simply too overloaded to the defense of the f7 square so suddenly uh, etienne bakro is facing really really many tactical problems even if you take here uh, this wasn't playing the game b takes c3 was not uh, etienne bakro's continuation but then rook from a to c1 you're trying d5 we take take you get this one you have to step back then we pick up this one look at this we pick up the uh, uh, pawn on d5 you're trying to battle bishop to e4 uh, even if you trade it off still you're vulnerable so much around the square f7 uh, and hans gained also one pawn which is also worth to mention so obviously completely completely winning end game i think here uh, for white so that's why for c3 etienne bakroch is trying now to lock simply the position on the queen side with the move b3 makes perfect sense but now hans plays a beautiful rook to a4 uh here beautiful rook lift now all of the pieces look at this by white are playing in beautiful harmony rook to c4 can happen very very strong ideas here by hans niemann d5 e takes d5 we have e takes d5 and now rook to f4 uh hans is continuing the pressure on the f file the whole concept that he prepared makes really sense now uh, look at this f7 so weak you're simply on the defensive side queen to e6 has to be played now by etienne bakro and now hans niemann had a beautiful beautiful tactical shot that he unfortunately missed here hans had the opportunity to play a beautiful bishop takes a6 look at this this would be epic then after bishop to a6 knight to d5 you attack the rook you have to step back if you step back maybe to the d file then obviously uh the queen is hanging even if you try something like rook to e7 then knight takes e7 and then again rook to uh, e4 then if you step back queen to d5 then rook takes e7 the queen gets lost so again you have to stay connected to this pawn on f7 maybe you can hold the position by playing queenside casting but again it gets very dangerous rook to x6 f takes x6 now uh, you have to step back where somewhere with the queen rook to d1 or something um, in this scenario g takes f3 uh, can happen and here i still i would say white is better although you have the bishops against the rook but uh, this passer is i think something that bothers um black will simply play rook to d7 attack it push the pawn further and i think again it's game over 
here for black this was now the whole line but after bishop to a6 i'm not sure if this uh, position would have been reached because this would be a stunning tactic so hard to defend after knight takes d5 a beautiful follow but okay after queen g6 hans makes now a mistake he plays now the move bishop to f5 which gives here um etienne bakro the opportunity to get back into the game because etienne bakro played now queen g5 and actually it's again a drawish position again an equal position now for both sides hans missed now a huge huge tactic in the middle game stage but okay hans continues the pressure bishop to g6 you cannot take of course because of rook takes f8 hans has this beautiful battery on the f file so that's why after bishop to g6 we have bishop to d6 here by um etienne bakro and now bishop takes f7 so still it seems so that black is losing here the, because look at this the bishop is coming through uh you lost the privilege of casting but here etienne bakro makes now a huge huge mistake he plays now the move king to d8 and this is not working actually what etienne bakro should have done and it's so hard to see it's just I, i'm not sure maybe even uh, a few players can see that but only i think the talkfish engine can calculate in such depth um, instead of this move king to d8 what you should have played here rook to f7 rook to f7 is actually a drawish position because after rook to f7 now this diagonal gets liberated you play queen to h2 then after king to f2 you play d4 you sacrifice even further the bishop that's uh, that's the goal here but then you get the check here and then after something like this you can do a perpetual check queen to e3 queen to d3 because you cannot get it, your king here because of oh, queen to c2 check me so as i said rook to f7 you have to now give up here the rook for the bishop just in order to get this check on h2 which would be very dangerous and now white is also facing many many tactical problems but after bishop to f7 etienne bakro uh, play now king to d8 and this is not working because of bishop to d5 and now suddenly the position is collapsing even if you try here bishop to d5 then knight to d5 you have to step back then again the knight is coming here we can play g3 rook to uh, rook to d4 or something this this is a problem uh light square problems here queen was coming on c6 so uh, maybe later um, you can also step back with your king so many many opportunities i will say again here for white black's king is naked here on this weird square on d8 but after bishop to d5 that's why g5 play by the macro he's trying to do something good choice if we think about it hard because we want of course white to move the rook and then you can deliver this dangerous check but now a beautiful follow-up again by hans rook to f6 allowing here even queen takes h2 king to f2 and there's not so much that can be done even if you try i don't know queen to e5 then bishop to b7 uh, then you can maybe try something like this we pick up this bishop after king to f2 etienne bakro tried g4 which makes again sense you're attacking the queen but hans had everything under control queen to f5 even if you continue maybe with a dangerous uh, g3 here um actually what's happening now is that you're disconnecting the queen from the defense of the bishop and again it's a thematic loss here because of the queen to e1 you could maybe try to step back with your bishop but now you get this one rook to d6 look at this bishop to d6 and now you deliver a check if we can pick up now this bishop uh, then you continue the attacking flow look at this and then you deliver a check and it's game over again uh, here for for black so i just wanted to show just one line how dangerous it would be to play the move g3 because you would disconnect actually the queen from the defense of the bishop so that's why for queen to f5 rook to e7 was now uh was now um uh, across continuation hans plays now king to e2 and in this particular position believe me or not etienne bakro resigned so what's the issue let's see a couple more moves if you try something like king to c7 then white will simply trade off the light square bishop will get the queen into the game you have to again get the king closer to defend this bishop on d6 then uh here knight to c4 you continue the pressure against this bishop maybe you can try to defend but now after a couple more moves uh, look at this uh, the queen is coming uh, you can get some checks you get to when you get the king on the back rank then this rook is coming you're trying to defend but now again something like this and uh in one line you can get even checkmate so i uh, many options were there but uh the issue is of course that the king is simply too endangered too too powerful position by this rooks here by hans Mok and niemann so this was the final position let's go back after king to e2 in this position etienne bakro resigned so incredible incredible game here by hans destroying the sicilian like this with really powerful play uh rook 
Rook battery on the F pile was too dominant. Uh, we saw that Etienne Bacro had uh, an opportunity to defend, but it was part of uh, also Hans Niemann's miscalculation. He missed this tactic with Bishop to A6, but again, really beautiful game here by Hans Moke Niemann. And okay, if you want to see other beautiful games played by Hans uh, from this event, check out our come to chess games. Here are some games that we have analyzed before. And if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. See you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.